I am under arrest. You're because detained. I yes. am under arrest. I am in handcuffs. Yes. I'm not free to leave. Okay. I'm not free to leave. Am I free to leave? No. This is 70-year-old County Sheriff James Luhan being arrested by his own people for obstruction during an investigation being carried out against himself, an investigation that started when he harbored former city councilor Philip Chacon, who was being sought after by the Española Police Department for assaulting a man. But this chaotic and despicable situation didn't start here, but here. Yeah, yes. Bring who in? Phil Chacon? That's who you have a warrant for? Right. Pull everybody out. I'll bring them in. I don't want to pull them out. Huh? I don't want to pull them back. Excuse me? On March 26, 2020, Española police finally issued a warrant for the arrest of Chacon. He hid in his residence, pretending to not be home. No, he, so what happened is they were doing a search warrant because a little Jip Jacob yeah. said that he got assaulted this morning. So we were doing a search warrant on that house or one of those motorhomes. And then he shot one of his rifles. So then we came around this way and right here on the other side where you have that like garage that's open and then there's another garage. He was coming out with three rifles. So then he dropped him and then went back inside. And then okay, he tried- so how many rifles are in there? Or do you guys have? There's three that are there and I know he has more. How do you know he has more? Because it's Phil. No. The officers, however, heard that he was home through the phone calls they made, but couldn't enter on the basis that Chacon was suspected to have multiple weapons on his person. During the standoff, Sheriff James Luhan suddenly shows up on the scene, reeking of alcohol, and demands the supervisor in charge to pull her men out and leave his men on the scene instead. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. I will bring him in. Okay? We don't need to make this bigger than what it is. Hey, uh, the sheriff just pulled in, and he's he's asking us to pull back, and he'll pull him in. But he's been drinking; I can smell it on him. We're gonna need somebody. Ah, huh? yeah. Okay, we need to pull somebody over here, somebody above me, because he's he's already pushing his weight around with me. So, okay. Despite trying to impose his authority over the supervisor, she maintains her composure and decides not to pull back as requested. The sheriff is here. He's trying to make us pull back and he said he'll call him out, but we're not pulling back. He, uh, he does know him, but he's not coming. We're not gonna, we're not gonna pull back because he says so. No. It's not gonna happen. Just let you guys know, okay? No. Yeah. I'm getting hold of the chief now. I'm not pulling back. Hi, I'm waiting for, I told Jeremy, Jeremy's calling command one now. Uh, but do you smell it or am I the only one who smells yeah, it? Yeah, please do something about okay. it. Okay, right. Hey, I know, I know. We're here in Tabitha, I know. I know Tabitha, but hey, listen, Michelle's, Michelle's the supervisor in charge. Okay, I'm running the TAC team, the TAC plan, okay. I know he just texted me, he's like, Tabitha's coming, do me a favor, okay, tell him to cooperate with me, tell him to trust me, okay, tell him to call me. I know, that's why we're here. Well, and then, and then he shot uh, while the cops were here. Tabitha, settle down, okay, tell him to text me and call me, okay? Okay, thanks, bye. I'll call command one now. Yeah, but do it. Do something about that. Uh, you're the I supervisor, know. so it's going to be on you. Right. But, but we can't... Uh... I, Definitely smelled it really bad. So did I. So, what? How can he? He can't be here. Story? At this point, everything looks extremely suspicious, and there's a clear confrontation between authorities. But what's more interesting is how the captain tries to turn off the supervisor's body cam to then ask how it is that Luhan got there in the first place. To make matters worse, Luhan then disobeyed city and state police and walked up to Shakan's residence into the hot zone of the scene with his phone in hand as if on a call with someone. Surprisingly, not long after this, Shakan left the residence and was finally put under arrest. Yeah, you told me to, uh, I said 22, I get off and I'm gonna take over. 
I have to keep the front door, by the way. For what front door? His front door. His wife gave it to me. Little did Luhan know, this had been his first step into prison. The following day, an investigation revealed that Chacon could possibly have a connection with a man named Ramon Vigil, who then was issued a search warrant for his phone in order to find valuable information to incriminate Chacon even further. Immediately after, police officers from the Española Police Department were dispatched to Ramon's house. This is a copy for the uh, search warrant of your cell phone. So today you will be seizing your cell phone. And this is your copy, okay? Hold a minute. Get on the phone with Bob. I'm on the phone with Bob right now. Bob, they got a search warrant on my cell phone. Ramon starts by showing surprise on the news and immediately tries to discredit the warrant's legality. He calls someone who appears to be his lawyer and gives him guidelines on how to proceed. Then, out of the blue, Sheriff James Lujan shows up on the scene unannounced and explains that Ramon was the one who called him. Yeah, I took the, the copy of the wrong one. Yo. The only thing he would want to make sure is he's not going to be arrested. You know? No, well, yeah, no. That's, it's not, that's not going to happen. Then. It's, no, it's a warrant, not, and he thought it was a municipal court judge yeah. signing no, it. No, no. Nope. So, um... No more than that, that, that's the big yes. thing. Yeah. Uh, Disconnect. Uh, he didn't know it. He called me and all scared, and I go, what, what's going on? Come to my house. Yeah, no, and I and I told them when well, we lost work, I have a... The garage door was open. We went to the front of the house, nobody answered, we came back, the garage door was closed. So we knew somebody was home. Yeah, so... Just to, just to seize the cell phone. Finally, Ramon's phone was confiscated. Unlucky for Sheriff Lujan, Ramon's phone was yet another link to his corrupt actions, and not long after, a search warrant was also issued, but this time, it was for his own phone. Hey, I'm your sheriff, how are you? Good, yeah. Good, it's James here, the sheriff. At his own headquarters, Española police officers are seen looking for Sheriff James Luhan with two search warrants to confiscate both his personal and work cell phone, as it is believed he had been having communication with Chacon and city councilor Ramon Vigil, and they want to see if he was abusing his power in the cases he was involved in. Hello, sir. Hey, sir. After being delivered the warrant and notified of the situation, Luhan immediately gives his phone to his undersheriff to then call his lawyer. He then tried to find flaws in the document to invalidate it, but to no avail. And in order to avoid any more time being wasted, the district attorney herself called Luhan's lawyer to make things even easier. Once again, the whole situation has become extremely shady, but not hostile yet. And it is here when Luhan shows concern about the number of units Española police dispatched. Yeah. 
Yeah. You have all your units here, so. I have all my units here. I told you were told. Who do you see here? The under sheriff, myself, the transport deputy, oh, Leon doing your report. And so okay. Uh, what are you Sounds good. saying? I'm going to do something? Well, we don't know. You don't know? Really, Ernest? I don't. Really? Unfortunately. Sure. Wow. Okay. Well, then right. you got to stand outside of my office. I'm going in here. That's really, really, so really bad, Ernest. Sure. So, uh, the as an interesting observation, when the officer tries to explain the situation to the undersheriff, he answers in a hostile way that shows disrespect and annoyance at the whole situation, clearly siding with his own sheriff. So, so the district attorney is calling the lawyer. I'm assuming the lawyer. But despite having a search warrant, Sheriff Lujan still refuses to give his phone to authorities. And what's even more weird is that despite having the warrant, the officers are not taking any step forward toward Lujan, giving him time to wander around with his phone to do whatever he pleases, giving him ample time to delete crucial information. Yeah, question? Yeah, we just wanted to have the phone. I have to go call my attorney from my office and see how my phone's. Oh, okay. I have no phone. Where are you phone? Then, after a long wait, the chief of Española police steps into the room, but he wasn't as patient as his officers. Trying to make contact with... Morning, Sheriff. Morning, Sheriff. Is he going to comply or no? I'm waiting for his attorney to get him. Okay. We're to trying to call him, but he's busy. So he has the warrants. They're signed. They're legal. It's a court order. I know. I know you guys are just doing your job, but... I don't want you guys in the middle of this. All we need are the phones. That's it. Well, once he gets his advice from his attorney, we'll do that. I got him. I don't know. You have your phone? His phones? Yes. Okay. Can I see him at least so I could give you that professional courtesy? Okay. So I don't understand with a legal order why he's fighting. If you have him, that's all we want. But the right to talk to his attorney, right? He, yeah, but he has the court orders. So, uh, you know, our attorney called his attorney. So okay. she told him exactly what. Well, well maybe that's why he's not asking because he's on the phone. Because I didn't try to call. Okay. So. I also I tried to call Tomas Campos. You know, I, I don't want to take it there. I didn't want to go this far. I just want the phones. I'd say it would be out of your hair. I don't know. At this point, it is clear that Luhan is trying to save himself from trouble, and so are his deputies. And to show the gravity of the matter, the undersheriff even asks the chief to pull his men back, feeling threatened by their presence at the scene, which we can't see from this camera footage angle, but are all well prepared in case anything bad happens. I think it can have you guys leave. I mean, make it more of a show than Nothing does happen. Well, I'm not the one making the show. I had only sent these guys in here. You know, I, I just, again, we want the phone. That's right. fine. You're, right. you're probably going to get the phone, but wait until you get the phone. Well, as, as you know, Under Sheriff, it's not probably. There's a court order. You know, I don't want to, I, I really don't. I don't want to have to put anybody in cuffs. I don't. But if if that's what I have to do, then I will do it. I don't want to do that. And you're saying who? Him. Oh. Because he's the one not complying with the court order. You know, if you have the phones, then we don't need to be having this conversation, you know. And that's well, just me. I, I don't want to do anything else. I just want the phones and we're out of here. That's it. You know, I, we're trying to do, I tried to call you this morning and meet up, but because of time sensitivity, you know, I was trying to give you guys the, the professional courtesy. You know what, Chief, I, I'm not surprised you guys are doing this. I, I, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But that's your, that's on your shoulders. Get to go ahead and let them, the mark to know that. Just keep one. I just want to say, we don't work that way, Chief. Do you guys want to come? That's fine. You don't have to say that. Well, I don't you know, know why they're here. Just to advise. Yeah, we'll be the better in that, right? Well, I, 
I tried calling you on your shirt. I tried calling it and it went straight to voicemail. I don't get involved with my right. And that's what I'm saying. I tried to be, you know, as low key as possible. I tried calling Tomas Campos. Not long after the conversation between the undersheriff and the chief, Luhan comes out of his office, making matters worse. I got you on the phone. Okay. I have the copy of the search warrant. Somebody has here. I gave him copies. Where are they? What's that? The warrant? You asked for them? No, he gave them to me. Okay. Search me. You have the search warrant for my search warrant? Uh, are you going to comply, yes or no? Uh, that's okay. all I want. You have the phones. That's it. I told you. You have your search warrant says to search me for personal phones? He has a phone. He already told me he has a phone. Okay. That's so, not what the search warrant says, does it? Okay, so you want us to lock down the sheriff's office? Go ahead and call them back. You're going to stay out here, sir. Stay out here. Stay out here. Stay out here. Because... Under sheriff, you can go through the court system. Right, we are. We're going to lock down this building until he gives me those phones. Really? Yes. That's what the DA's office is Really? Yeah. Where's that on paper? You can call her. Andrea Reed, do you want her number? If this wasn't enough already, while the chief was talking to the under sheriff, Sheriff Luhan is seen attempting to leave in his car. What's going on? You're not going to stop me from leaving if I want to leave. Am I under arrest? If we have to. Am I under arrest? Not, not, not now. Get away from me. Not now. Go back inside. We're going to lock down the office. Please, go back in the office. Seriously. Don't touch. Back up. Back you can up. go in the office, but back up. Bro. Don't touch. Don't reach. Back up. Go inside. Because you're not certified, so. Back up. Seeing the situation has escalated, the officer from whom we see the perspective speaks to an officer who's outside the building and explains they're locking up the headquarters. Um, he's not complying. He doesn't want to give up the phones. He gave the phones to the undersheriff and said, search me, knowing that he gave the phones to the undersheriff. They're not voluntarily giving them up, so we're going to lock down the building. If alive, you go. After communicating to this officer that they'll be locking down the sheriff's headquarters, the chief tries once again to talk reason with Luhan. So are you refusing? Is that what you're saying? Refusing sheriff, what? You're refusing a lawful order? From, from, the, from, the, back. from the judge. What judge? Judge Gonzalez. On what case no. is that on? On my case. You have the search warrant. On your case? Yeah, you yeah. have the search warrant. Yeah, the, search the, the case you is continue, going to district court, right? You continue to continue it's to continue district court to judge resist has and this case, right? Showing a pattern of behavior, sure. Really? Yes. It's a pattern of already harassment. Already twice. Already, already twice. 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 That's okay. You have your you have your opportunity in court. I'm, I'm here asking. So will you on a misdemeanor? Okay, for now. For now. I've done for now. Nothing. Are you then, accusing then me of not, something else? Then why not give me the phones? I told you I'm seeking legal counsel first. I have you that have right. Do I not have a right to seek you have legal, legal counsel? Order. You have I a legal order. And it doesn't say how long I have to give it to you, does it? It says now. Does yes, it? Yes. Show it's me. It's a court order. You have the copies. It says now? Yeah. Well, when do you, okay, so you get a search warrant. You just do it whenever you want. That's today's date on it. So I'm serving it. Then, finally, Sheriff Luhan decides to give the chief his phones. But because they only have the order to seize them, they can't actually go through them until they have a new order that allows them to do so. Sheriff, it would just be so much easier if you just give us these phones. Well, I don't have the phones, do I? Well, no, but you, we, I saw you give them to your undersheriff mm -hmm. who has them in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So just the knowledge of that. Give him the phones. This is all harassment and retaliation because I told the city council that you shouldn't be the chief. You That's what it is. Think whatever you want. I don't think, I know. Okay. That's exactly what it is. You do, you Go ahead and give it to him. These phones are not to be gone through until you have a warrant for the content. You only have a warrant for the phones, You're absolutely not the content. Right. You're absolutely right. And good luck, absolutely. and you better not come through a magistrate. You better go through a district court judge. Thank you, Undersheriff. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Have a good day, sir.
Unluckily for Lu Han, the chief came back the next day, and this time with a search warrant for the headquarters for refusing to cooperate on an investigation by not providing access to his phones. But this time, they weren't going to go that easy on him, as this time, SWAT forces were called to the scene, and they locked down the building with Lu Han in it. No. Are you we're, you we're, are doing? we're trying to do everything peacefully. We tried to, okay? That's all we're doing. We're, we're done here, we're leaving. Okay, well get out of here then, you're done, get out. We'll no. leave when we're ready. You okay. said you were done. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're wrapping it up right now. You know how it goes, you know how it goes, we're, we're doing our law enforcement duties, that's it. District court signed it, that's it. Okay, Okay. so as soon as we're done, we're gonna get out of your hair. Why are you calling everybody here to put this them in This is our court? house. Well right now it's ours. No, right yes. now it's ours. We own the building right now, shut up. Don't talk oh, to me like well, that, shut up. Hey. I don't work for you. Don't okay. talk to me like that. Shut up. Easy, Closer. easy. Get there and let's go. Are we done in here? Shortly after this confrontation, another one occurs between the chief and undersheriff where the charges against Luhan are explained. He put himself in there, not me. So we have a right to investigate our citizens. Okay, so why does he show up? Why does he show up? Because he wants to get his money. Now he's going to ask. Finally, we see that Sheriff Luhan was put under arrest. What's interesting is how he recognizes the person recording as one of his own men. Sir, let's walk over here. Why is that? Dude, that that's let's, messed up. Let's walk over here. Sheriff. Sheriff. That's what I'm saying. Let's get him on the opposite side of this truck. Well, you got Tabitha over there. Right here, right here. Right here. Right here. Just get him out of the way. I'm not even like, armed. I'm handcuffed, dude. This isn't my protect them. I have a search warrant for your phone for the building. For what? I couldn't tell you. I'm here all the time. Stand up here. This is their attack platform. Sheriff Luhan then discovers that the press is taking pictures and recording him, so he asks the officers to put him inside. I got the press out here taking pictures of me in handcuffs. Push him around into the doorway. Yeah, push him around into the doorway. At least to the doorway. Aye! This is ridiculous. Keep them up there. Hold on, we have pressure. Keep them up there. Come over here, sir. Keep them up there. Sheriff, Sheriff, go! Stop me! Stay out here! Aye! Ah, oh, Jesus! Really? You don't have to look. look just here, look stand. Just stand. Just stand. Put him on the other side of the truck. Put him on the other side of the truck. It hurts. They're, they're loose, sir. They're loose. No, they're not loose. A remark that maybe not all of you know is that the officers that are grabbing him right now are actually Lu Han's people, making this whole situation the more sad and despicable. The same detective we saw earlier had a discussion with the undersheriff, then shows up and informs Lu Han of everything that's going on. Can you take these handcuffs off? They hurt. They hurt. Am I under arrest? You're being detained. Well, yeah. Why do I have to have cuffs on? They hurt. We'll take them off. In a minute. Just want to take them. Off. You have a search warrant for my iPhone. You got my iPhone. You got a search warrant for the building. You're searching the building. I don't know what you're searching for, though. I'm just tell you. Okay. Let me explain this. Let me explain. Sheriff Luhan is supposedly not arrested at this point, he's just detained, but the decisions he takes in the following minutes are what finally put him in the back seat of a police car. Gives me the authorization to seize your phone, okay? Search your phone, okay? But it also gives me the authorization. So what, what I'm asking for you to do is unlock your phone, unlock it, you get back to me, and I'm going to remove the security settings. I don't want your passcode. I'm not asking for your passcode. I'm asking you to unlock the phone for the search warrant. You can read it if you want under number two. I will if I get a chance to talk to my attorney. 
doesn't work like that. This Marty, not a negotiation. This is not a this is not huh? a negotiation, Sheriff. your attorney when oh, this is all done asking. when this is all done you can call your attorney but right now we're, we're we're getting trying to get you to comply with the warrant the warrant stipulates exactly what we want you give us that we'll get the phone we're out of here that's it what do you want to do sheriff Right now, I am under arrest. You're because detained. I am under arrest. I am in handcuffs. I'm not free to leave. I'm not free to leave? Am I free to leave? No. no. Then, if I'm under arrest, I have a right to an attorney, correct? You do. Okay. And I'm not questioning you. I'm invoking I'm my right to an attorney you. right now. Okay. You understand that? So, take him before you. Book me for booking. For obstruction. Obstruction. Who's, who's I'm not obstructing. Who's your number? Over here, Sheriff. Over here. Over here. Sheriff. Just. They're gonna book me. Take them. Book them. Take 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 them. Oh, yeah. Rio Arriba County, Sheriff James Lujan was finally arrested, and on December 29, 2020, he was sentenced to three years in prison for aiding a felon and intimidating a witness.